morning YouTube. Hey, uh, this will be the first part of a video dealing with uh, the towels that I'm making for the 2015 towel exchange thing that I like to get involved with every year. So, but what, what I want to show you is I've made a few minor changes to the way in which I warp my loom up. Um, so I'm just going to turn the camera around in a minute and show you what I'm doing a little bit differently and then um, I'll probably even put the camera onto the tripod for, for part of this. Then uh, we'll just take a look at what's different. So as I mentioned in the previous video about choosing about the threads, I'm using natural cotylin for my warp. So let's take a look at what I've got here. I'm sitting at the bench here and one of the things I've done differently is that I'm using weights to tie on to the warp. You can see I've got some some small dumbbells down there hooked on. I've got an assistant checking me out too. Um, and anyways, he can be funny at times. So what I'm going to do, these weights are basically going to hold tension on the warp as I wind it on. So as I wind it on, obviously those weights are going to pull up. So they go up over the top of the loom and through the rattle that's built into the loom and then it'll get wound on the back. And the other difference I did was the way I put the lee sticks on. Usually I tie the lee sticks on so they're flat going back like this. But then when we come over the top, it ends up putting a big bow in the lee sticks. And I've always worried that I'm going to put too much pressure on them and break them. So this time, you can kind of see I've changed the angle such that the lee sticks are tied up right toward the rattle. And I'm hoping that by doing this, and it, it sure feels like it, that I'm with the combination of the weight being on the warp as I pull it through and that being up that I'll get a more even tension on my warp uh, and that that'll just just make the whole project easier. Now it does mean that when I'm ready to start threading the heddles because I like to use the lee sticks to help me uh, keep track of which threads to grab next, I'm going to have to move them down a little bit, but I think I can handle that. So, Okay, um, even better than having a tripod is having a person who will hold the camera. So that's what I've got. I'm winding on this warp. It's a bit heavier to do this way, but I'm getting a nice tight uh, warp winding on here like this so you can see that and, and you can also see on the other side of the loom how the weights are holding the warp nice and tight as I wind it on. So that's the process that I'm using here and uh, yes it's a little different than I usually do but I think it's going to help, especially since this time around I made a much longer warp than I usually do. I usually do five or six yards and this time I've got a ten yard warp on there because I'm hoping to get more towels out of this. So that's uh, what's going on with winding on this warp. More later. I have just changed colors. I'm starting the fourth towel in this set. I, this is the Kelly Green and now I'm doing the Burgundy. And starting off at the very edge, I'll, I'll remove the temple so you can see it'll better. Hopefully you can see that uh, in this area I'm just doing it plain tabby weave. Uh, that's going to be the part that gets gets the hem. So it's just easier there. There's no uh, pattern in there like this. Here's the Atwater Bronson lace that I'm using for a pattern. So I'm doing this, I'm doing the weaving of this in what's called a block weave. 
This is uh, the pattern that I'm using for making the towels. And I'm very well aware that many of the people who watch my YouTube channel don't fully understand weaving patterns. But for those of you who do, you can look at this. And for those of you who don't, I'm going to try and make some simple explanations. First off, what I'm weaving is Atwater Bronson lace. The normal way of doing that is that every second thread would be on shaft number one. And shaft number one is this bottom row here. However, because of the width that I need and the number of heddles that I needed on shaft number one, I don't have enough heddles on shaft number one of my loom to put every second thread on shaft one. So what I did was I have gone to shaft one, then this is equivalent to shaft one, then shaft one. So I'm using one, two, one, one, two, one, as if it were one, just because it's easier to use two shafts as if they were one than it is to move the heddles. So the first thing I'm going to do is change colors and show you in the threading that I've got an area that is only tabby. So let's do that. So we'll select that and we'll show you the tabby thread. One, two, three, four, five, six. In the threading, the ones that I have now got in yellow are tabby. Also, when I am uh, weaving, I'm going to have a block that is only tabby. That's what I'm going to use for the hems. So again, let's show you where that is in uh, tabby and go here. That's two, three, four, five, six. So you can see that I've got an area on the side of my towel and on the top of my towel that is straight tabby. And that means that shaft one and two used as if they were shaft one are one treadle shown here in my uh, tie up and all of my other shafts three four five and six are shown here in the tie up as opposed to the one so i can use one two three four five six treadle those treadles make my tabby now why did I spread these out like this when normally you would see them all squished together it's because I have 14 treadles on my loom and I prefer a walking style treadling rather than a non-walking style I guess using the same foot many times back and forth so I have put these out spread them out to the actual treadles that I am using I've got the space why not use it so let's just take a look at the tabby I'll do about uh, five or six shots of that and then we'll take a look at the other uh, blocks One, two. Okay, now I can start on the next block. I think the focus in my last bit of video wasn't as good as it should be. So I'm going to take one or two more shots of Tabby um, with the focus and the lighting changed just a little bit. See if I get a better picture here. So, here we go. This is tabby. That was tabby. Now I want to discuss block A of my pattern. And block A is, well, 
I'm going to, in my mind, separate the block A into its warp component and its weft component. So first, let's talk about the warp component of block A. And the warp component of block A consists of these six warp threads. So that's shafts 1, 4, 2, 4, 1, 3. But remember that the way I am doing this, shafts 1 and 2 are normally written as just shaft 1 in most pattern books. I simply split it into two shafts so I could avoid having to move extra heddles to, to a different shaft because they didn't have enough heddles on shaft 1. So what I've got is shaft 3, most people would have as shaft 2. What I have is shaft 4, most people would have as shaft 3, etc., etc. Okay, so there's block A from a warp perspective. The interesting thing to note is that block A is repeated there, and then it's repeated there. Okay, so I'm repeating block A across my warp many times. Now let's look at block A from a weft perspective. And to do that, we're going to go down six threads and over to here. And this is block A from a weft perspective. Put it in a different color so it's real easy for you to find it. And what that basically means is that when I'm weaving block A from a weft perspective, this is what I'm actually doing the weaving, okay, I get a lace block, a little lace chunk of six threads, which basically will look like a little tic-tac-toe piece where the warp is dominant whenever it crosses blocks B or C. But when block A weft crosses block a warp, I have tabby. Okay? And to do this, I'm using treadle 5, 9, 5, 9, 6, 9 because of my tie up. So there's 5, there's 6, there's 9. That's how I think of block A from both a warp and a weft perspective. Now I'm going to do one set of block A, which is the vertical or warp floats only. So, treadle 5. Shuttle 9, 5, 9, 6, which is tabby, 9, which is tabby. And hopefully you can see right here, 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 and here the um, small tabby or um, warp floats. Now let's go through that same exercise of looking at the blocks first in warp, then in weft, but this time we're going to look at block B as in boy. Okay, so I will highlight the threads in block B. One, two, three, four, five, six. I went one too far. There's block B. And as you can see, block B consists of 
shaft one, five, two, five, one, three. And I've already discussed one and two being equal to one. Okay, now that's block B from a warp perspective. And as you can see, again, I repeat this across the uh, loom because I want a towel more than an inch or two wide. But my entire warp will repeat. Now from a weft perspective, let's look at block B again. And in this case, the weft perspective of block B is going to be these six threads. So what that means is that the treadling for block B is going to be treadle 4, 10, 4, 10, 6, 9. And what that gets me is, in this case, I've got the horizontal dominance of the weft threads, but where it intersects with the block B vertical or warp, I end up with the warp thread on top of the weft float. So it's a warp float that is dominant. Now the next thing I'm going to do is block B, which is the horizontal float, or the first of, of the, the weft floats. So this is shafts 410, 410, and then 69. That was block A, or no, block B, which is the horizontal floats. And right here you can see the vertical float is over the horizontal float in this position, in this position, but not here and here. So, okay, now let's do two sets of block A. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's the first set of block A. There are six threads in a block. One, two, three, four, five, six. I'm going to move the camera just a little bit. There we go. All right, now let's take a look at the uh, the pattern, if you will, for block C. And I want to think of this almost as two separate patterns. So first, let's think of the block C that is in the, th the threading or from the warp perspective. So that would be these six threads right here. Now, if you look at that, when those six threads go down through the first row, they are they show the the warp as being under 
the horizontal or WEF floats. But in the second row, they show the vertical or the warp threads as being over the horizontal or weft threads. Now let's take a look at the block C from a weft perspective. And from a weft perspective, you would have one, two, three, four, five, six in pink. So here's block C warp. Here's block C weft. And what that gives us is that in one of the where block C weft intersects block C warp, the warp is on top. And in the other place, the weft is on top. So this is my block C pattern. And now we'll do block C. One, two, three, four, five, I got a little funny loop on that one. Oh well. There you go. That's block C. And if you look right here, going this way, you can see I'm an A. Then in this one, the horizontal went over the vertical, or the weft went over the warp in the pattern, going up like this. And in this one, the warp is over the weft. And of course these alternate like that. So there's the detail of one time through a full set. And the color I'm using for this particular example is burgundy. I want to talk about the treadling a little bit more. I mentioned when I was at the very end of my discussion of the tabby that I prefer a walking treadling as opposed to using one foot a lot of times. So what in most weaving patterns, you would see the tie up and the treadling all over close to this edge, all stuck together, real close together. What I did here is center all my treadling on my loom because I've got 14 treadles. So instead of using treadles one through seven and having my feet always off to the left side of my loom, I've centered this such that I can treadle it and leave the, the, the opening in the middle. So what that means is when I'm doing shaft six, that's left foot. This is a right foot shaft, left foot, right foot, left foot, right foot. That's block the tabby block. In the next block, which is block A, I'm left foot on five, right on nine. Left, right, left, right. Block B, where I'm using shafts four and ten, are left, right, left, right, left, right. And finally, in block C, I'm using shafts 3 and 11, but it's still left, right, left, right, left, right. Kind of sounds like many, many years ago when I was in the Army and you learned to march. Left, right, left, right. Uh, that's the reason why I have the treadling split out and spread like this because to me it makes it easier to do the treadling to keep track of where I am to split it up left right left right that's what I mean by a walking treadling okay that's enough for 
this particular video which will be uh, the first of my videos showing the Atwater Bronson lace that I'm going to be that I'm using to make the towels that will go in for the 2015 dish towel exchange and the towel that will be given away as part of my 500 subscriber giveaway. Um, for details on that, if you haven't already uh, gotten involved in it, see my previous video. I think it's called uh, Celebrating 500. So anyways, that's it for now. There will be another video showing these towels when they're completed, but that'll probably be a week or two before I get to there because I'm going to be slow and take my time about finishing them. I've got the time to get it done. More later. Bye-bye.